is Stephen Sargent, Blockchain Futures Conference 2022. We're here with our friends Omnia Protocol, and we were able to rope in Matthew Sampson from Grey Wolf Analytics to talk to us a little bit about consumer protection and anti-scam protocols. Matthew, tell us a little bit about who you are and what your company does. Yeah, so my name is Matthew. I'm from the East Coast of Canada, born and raised. Um, and I work for Grey Wolf. And what Grey Wolf does is we do scam response and prevention. Um, and so, you know, when someone when someone experienced some sort of crypto scam, we make sure that the data on that scam is disseminated to the industry in a secure and high context manner. And then we create models to convert that into proactive protections and uh, information for decision making to protect some people from scams in the future. We just had FinTrack here who said they're going to come back and they're going to talk to us a little bit. But tell us how important this information is to get out to the public and to your customers in order to protect themselves, but also balance their privacy. Yeah, like risk mitigation is all about information. So like when you think about falling victim to a scam, it's because there is something that you didn't know, right? Like if you knew all the details, um, you wouldn't fall victim to it because you would know that you know, I'm not getting the return that I want, or this isn't a legitimate service. Um, so really the, the solution to scams is information. The question is, who's gonna have that information? Is it the service providers that are like providing the services, or do we wanna go full decentralized and let the consumer have that information? And it really comes to how much sovereignty does the individual wanna maintain, how much privacy. Um, the more privacy and sovereignty you maintain, the more responsibility as an individual you have to gather that information and the more legwork you have to do to get the same protection besides having a third party that would do it for you. That's amazing. Your brother Christian actually talked to us, went through a lot of scams that actually happened on the Ethereum and other blockchains. How does Omnia protocol protect people but also keeping your customers compliant? Yeah, so I think what do we do in terms of a compliance and privacy, it's a, like a challenge. Most of the people think that privacy doesn't go hand in hand with compliance but it's actually a way that you can do that, right? So the thing is that Omnia is like a middleware, it's a layer zero protocol, which kind of fills all the, it's between you as a user and the infrastructure as a blockchain. So because of the position that we have right there, we are able to ensure the privacy uh, for the off-chain part. So when the transaction is being in a pending state, when it's broadcasted through the network, but in same time, we are integrating with the technology providers out there that can ensure that we can check against sanctioned lists, right? So instead of banning, uh, banning an entire protocol, uh, it's happened, for example, yesterday with Tornado Cash, some of the companies, RPC providers, decided to block entire uh, protocols. We have that granularity because we are able to do a dry run of the transaction. And because we do that, we can see with what addresses you can interact and we only filter at the edge of the protocol. So if it's something illicit, we just drop the transaction at the edge of the protocol. That's awesome. So you use products like Chain Analysis and Elliptic yeah. to ensure that the transactions are meeting those regulatory requirements and compliance needs. Matt, can you tell us anything about what's happening in the scam space that you've seen, especially in Canada? We're extremely vulnerable, especially with our elderly here in Canada, the scams, especially we've seen a lot coming in with crypto. Tell us a little about what you're seeing. Yeah. Unfortunately, scammers are quite clever um, and they take advantage of people's willingness to trust others. Um, and so, you know, one thing that we're seeing a lot in scams is that the scammer will do everything they can. Like, they will never tell you that this is a scam besides the fact that they stop talking to you. Like, we've, we have had, we've seen cases where someone has been a fake uh, financial crime government expert. And, you know, typically what happens in a scam, if you have an investment scam, you would put your money into it um, and you would get these amazing returns that aren't real. And when you ask to withdraw your funds, that's where you start getting revealed what's the issue. I mean, those two cases where when someone asks to withdraw their funds, the scammer starts accusing them of like uh, potentially participating in some sort of financial crime. So now you have this person who's kind of in this technology that they don't really are comfortable with, um, and and they actually think that they may have broken the law. So like, not only are they financially being hurt by this, but they're actually not going to be going out and talking to people because they think that they might have done something bad. Um, so scammers are doing a lot to really put pressure on individuals to stay quiet um, and really just let the scammers keep doing what they do. So that's why it's really important to educate people and let, let them know about like, what they are like able to do and what they can't do. Awesome. Now, Alex, before we go, what are some of the things that you're seeing, some of the trends that you're seeing when it comes to privacy and security? I know Christian labeled uh, several different scams. 
language attacks, several different areas where illicit actors are gaining hold of that information that you're trying to keep private and help out your customers. Talk about some of the trends that you're seeing emerging that your technology is helping to uh, deter. Sure. So I think in general, most of the people think about privacy on chain, like uh, uh, protocols such as Monero, Zcash. So those who are leveraging zero knowledge uh, proofs, uh, ring signatures and all that stuff. But there is an entire, let's say, activity that is happening before a transaction is mined. And we call that off-chain privacy, right? And we leverage uh, cutting-edge technologies such as Mixnets in order to improve the privacy. We've seen a trend where people are uh, enabling VPNs, they're using Tor. But little that they know that there is research which actually proves that you are able to de-anonymize users who are using Tor browser or VPNs, which are centralized. So we are kind of doing the other way around. We have a decentralized approach. And with Mixins, of course, you can add obfuscation traffic. You can add decoy traffic in order to increase the privacy. But you still need to make sure that you ensure the compliance. So this is a trend that we see out there that people go either black or white. But I think, uh, as you mentioned, I think it's really important to understand that there are gray areas as well where you can still meet needs on both ends. You can still be private and ensure compliance in the same time. I love it. Privacy meets compliance and we're balancing here. Thank you so much, both of you here. Blockchain Futures Conference 2022. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.